Hi guys, it's a three minute tutorial on United States patent application publication claims. So we've already been through this first info page. We've been through the figures of this publication and we've been through the written description of this publication, which discusses the figures in writing. And at the end of the written description, you have the probably most important part of the publication, the claims. So the claims put people on notice of what they have to do to be sued by the patent holder should this publication of an application issue into a patent after examination. So this is a United States publication. Uh, this is not a United States patent, all right? There's a big difference there. So these aren't actually enforceable yet uh, just because they're in a publication. In fact, this uh, patent application, which is the subject of this publication, actually went abandoned, so these will never be enforceable. However, if you're looking at a publication, this is probably the most important part for you. So you'll see a lot of times the I claim language, okay? And then you'll go on to methods, systems, apparatuses, et cetera, uh, that are allowable under 35 USC 101, or at least should be allowable. Your claim should keep that in mind because you can write a claim on anything you want that does not mean that it is allowable under 35 USC 101, which talks about patent eligible subject matter. Um, so here, this is a method set. Um, and again, this is for a walking through walls training system. So it's pretty obvious that this doesn't actually work. Um, and so it probably failed on the one-on-one -on -one front, but generally your claims, uh, you have 20 of them up front, you have one independent claim. And so this one independent claim is what allows you to have dependent claims, which kind of further narrow down your independent claim and potentially get around some of the prior art references that might come up, right? So you wanna offer 20 different kind of fallbacks there. So that way, if an examiner finds, you know, a really good reference that invalidates, you know, claim one and claim two, well, now you have claim three here that goes even deeper. And if it doesn't, you know, uh, if the prior art doesn't teach claim three, well, that's allowable subject matter, assuming that everything else uh, is appropriate statutorily. So these are your claims. These are most important parts of your patent documents. I could go ad infinitum about the importance and the rules and regulations of the claims, um, but these are at the back of the publication. These are typically at the back of the application, and these will be at the bottom of a patent should it issue. Um, and again, these are you know what the court is going to primarily look to to determine if you've infringed a patent. Thanks.